Legal disclaimer. This video is intended for entertainment and comedic purposes only and is in no way intended to be an endorsement of drug taking, substance abuse, homicidal violence or illegal activity. Drug taking is an extremely grave and serious topic and in no way should be trivialised or taken lightly. Okay, let's get high. Terence McKenna once said, if the words life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness don't include the right to experiment with your own consciousness, then the Declaration of Independence isn't worth the hemp it was written on. He also made a case that the evolution of humankind went hand in hand with the use of psychotropic drugs. When we examine our culture, it's immediately obvious that some of the greatest works of Western fiction have been created whilst under the influence of massive amounts of drugs. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, William Blake's Jerusalem, and Lance Armstrong's entire fucking cycling career. Fallout is quite unique as a game because in the war-ravaged post-apocalyptic wastelands, the use of performance-enhancing substances has become basically mainstream. It's almost literally like the Olympics. With the possible exception of a couple of companions who will indicate mild disapproval at your drug taking, for the most part, in the Commonwealth, you could spend the whole day staggering around in your shit-stained pants as high as a fucking kite and no one will give a fuck. The four main reasons to take drugs are, well, apart from the fact it's just funny, firstly, curing all manner of post-apocalyptic syphilis and staving off the effects of illness, particularly on harder difficulty settings, you can literally catch crabs from just sleeping on a filthy bed. There's also buff out and booze for carrying much more scavenged crap back to base. If you're like me, I obsessively hoard any scrap I can find. I wouldn't leave a shitty nappy behind if I had space for it in my bag. Then there's charisma, perception and intelligence for speech checks. And my personal favourite, enhancing abilities to commit acts of ultra-violence. Yes. So, let's discuss chems and what sort of things are on offer. The full list of drugs in Fallout 4 are so numerous I can't list them all. But here are some of my personal favourites that I find myself using on a regular basis. Medicines. There are the five staples, Radex. This increases your rad resistance. Then there's Radaway. This purges radiation poisoning from your body. Then there's Stimpax, which heal you up. Antibiotics. They cure a host of wasteland diseases. And lastly, the new herbals. These fight symptoms of illnesses until you can get them cured. The second category is carry weight enhancers. Broadly speaking, this is basically buff out, which gives you plus two strength, grilled rad stag, and gazelle steak. They each give you plus 25 pounds carry weight. Then there's also booze. Different types of booze give you between plus one and plus three strength. Note that booze is also excellent for melee combat and some charisma checks. Then there's the speech barter and charisma enhancers. Drugs like Day Tripper, that gives you luck, plus three charisma, at the cost of strength. Mentats, plus two intelligence, plus two perception. Still good for passing certain speech tests. Then there's Berry Mentats, these give you plus five intelligence, and interestingly, highlights living targets for eight minutes. I would note, it actually highlights all animated targets, so even uh, gun turrets will be highlighted, for example. Orange Mentats, plus five perception, and 10% fats accuracy for eight minutes. Great Mentats, 10% better prices, plus five charisma for eight minutes. I normally wouldn't advocate getting skull fucked and going shopping. In a real world scenario, this would undoubtedly result in some really poor purchasing decisions, such as returning home clutching five family sized boxes of Cocoa Pops and a fur coat. However, in Fallout 4, it's worth noting 
that if you intend on buying an expensive named weapon or selling a particularly large stash of loot, it's often worth considering slamming down a great Mentat for some seriously enhanced purchasing power. Carnage enhancing drugs. Fucking cow! If you're like me, you probably don't take drugs regularly in the game. I won't take them for days at a time, but then a moment comes Typically I'll walk around the corner and find myself outnumbered, outgunned and without the capacity to run or hide. For me, this is an ideal moment to hit the pit boy, start injecting myself up to the gills with drugs and come out wailing in full berserker mode. Sometimes there is only one way out and it's through. Jet fuel. Plus 35 max AP and AP re regen boost uh, for 8 minutes. Jet fuel is basically a VATS friendly version of jet, and jet slows times for te time for 10 seconds. Absolutely perfect for increasing your capacity for killing under dire circumstances outside of VATS. Then there's Fury, which at the cost of 5 perception gives you plus 25 damage resistance and plus 50% melee damage. Then there's Overdrive, plus 25% damage plus 25% crit chance for 8 minutes. Undoubtedly one of the best violence related narcotics out there. 8 minutes of party fun. As long as your idea of party fun is smashing people's skulls flat. Psycho. 25% damage plus 25 damage resistance. The original and best. Then there's Psycho Jet. Plus 25% damage 35 damage re reduction and plus 40 AP. It also slows time for 15 seconds. This is my absolute personal favourite and it stacks with a lot of the other damage buffs. There's nothing that can be beat about slowing time and increasing your damage output. Ultra Jet. This slows time, gives you 100 action, action points for 15 seconds. Another great one for VATS combat. Then Carmex, plus two times sneak attack multiplier and three perception and agility for eight minutes. This is absolutely perfect for sniper builds. Oh, and lastly, Buff Jet. Slows time for 15 seconds, gives you strength and endurance and max HP. Not bad for slow motion face punching. The exact choice of drug and the drug combinations you use will largely be the result of your personal playstyle. Being a melee or a ranged character, or preferring to fight with or without using fats, will have a large influence on your own personal drug cocktails. Also, be aware that booze might be good for a speech check or for melee combat, and some of the Mentats have both speech check abilities and combat enhancements. Have fun, experiment, and see what kind of fucking crazed drug cocktails work for you. Many drug and booze combos will stack benefits quite successfully, potentially leading to a massive short-term boost in your character's ability to go full chopper on the enemy. But when all else fails, remember that if you do ever walk around a corner and find yourself staring up the moist nostrils of a legendary deathclaw at point blank range, you can do far worse than just hitting your pit boy, going to your inventory, taking one dose of every last motherfucking chem you have in your possession. Granted, it's not the most sophisticated tactic in the world, but it has got me out of a lot of tight spots in the past. On the downside, when the fighting is over, you will probably have to stagger off to the doctor to get your multiple addictions treated. But on the plus side, at least you're still around to be able to stagger off somewhere. This neatly brings me on to the, t the next topic, addiction. Habitually necking booze cocktails and shooting up psychotropic drugs will inevitably lead you to become addicted sooner or later. When this happens, you will suffer adverse health effects until you either get cured or manage to get another dose. Fortunately, and with a slight hint of irony, there are drugs for curing your addiction too. Refreshing beverage and addictol. Not cheap, but worth every penny. A doctor or medic can cure your addictions as well for a small fee, if one is close by. 
On survival mode especially, it's worth being keenly aware of the locations of any doctors you've encountered. Personally, I always plan for the worst. I carry a couple of Addictol in my bag at all times in case I end up getting addicted to something. I have no intention of ending up like Mama Murphy, who, let's face it, would probably suck a bag of dicks for her next fix. On the topic of drug management, remember to pl pack plenty of water, as a lot of drugs will dehydrate you. Sourcing your drugs. Well, you can loot them. You will literally find them everywhere. You can also buy them if you see something particularly tasty on a vendor. And lastly, make them at your own Fallout themed meth lab. Thanks to the chemistry station, you can unleash your inner Walter White and get busy cranking out as many obnoxious chems as you have materials to make. You can also combine existing drugs into new recipes. You can, for example, combine Psycho and Jet into Psychojet. It's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Just follow the menus. There's also some perks that will give you some added benefits and protection from chem use. Medic. This gives increased results from Stimpax, Radex and Radaway. Always a safe bet, especially on survival mode. Then there's Chemist, which has four ranks. This lets your drug sessions last longer. There's Party Boy, which has three ranks. This increases the benefits of consuming alcohol and provides immunity to addiction. Chem Resistant, that has two ranks and an absolute must have for any post-apocalyptical junkie, provides immunity to addiction. It's worth considering the booze drug combos. Think about how to make it funny by coming up with mixes. So in conclusion, there's a lot of occasions in Fallout 4 where having access to your own little stash of drugs is almost certainly beneficial. You might just want to pass a speech check for a quest or get slightly better prices from a vendor. Similarly, you might just want to get rid of that case of Wastelander dick rot you picked up from sleeping on that shitty bed. <sighs> Lastly, drugs in Fallout 4 are useful for enhancing your ability to commit acts of brutal and horrific violence. In some circumstances, potentially futile and fatal encounters can be transformed into beautiful and balletic scenes of carnage, where you emerge as the victor. What is there not to like about that? To round this one up, if your idea of a nice evening at home is being arse banged on a shitty mattress whilst your half rotten teeth fall out, all for the sake of a free bag of crack, then perhaps hardcore drug addiction is a good life choice for you. I feel obliged to say, however, that for the majority of us, it's probably for the best that we confine our acts of drug-crazed violence to video games. So happy hunting in the Commonwealth, and I hope this helped you start on your beautiful psychotic journey of death. <laughs>